Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is fraction pairs with sum 1 and it is a medium level problem. So the problem statement says that we have been given a list of n fractions represented as two lists, numerator and denominator. Now our task is to determine the number of pairs of fractions whose sum is equal to 1, right? So I'll explain you this particular thing with the help of an example. So let us take this particular example first and let us also have a look at the uh, time and space complexity. So the time complexity is n log n and the space complexity is O of n. So let us see how we can solve this. So they are asking to count the number of pairs such that x by y, let us say x1 y1 plus x2 y2 is equal to 1, right. We have to find the number of pairs such that this is true. Now our first task should be to convert all of these fraction into their simplest forms and reduce those fractions. So for example, 1 by 2 will be written as it is and then we have 2 by 4. So we can reduce this fraction into 1 by 2 as well. Now we have 2 by 6. So we can reduce the fraction to 1 by 3 and at the end we have 8 by 12. So we can reduce this fraction to 2 by 3, right. So first of our first task will be to reduce these fractions. Now you will see it will be much easier to form the answer rather than having all the fractions in the non-reduced form. So now what you will do, for example, you encounter this 1 by 3, right. So you want to make the whole sum equals to 1. How will you make this? You know the total value is 3. So you can subtract 1 from 3. So you want to get 3 minus 1 by 3, right. And that is equal to 2 by 3. So whenever you see a 1 by 3, you would say that you want 2 by 3, right. And depending on the number of 2 by 3 that we have in our uh, array, it will get added to our answer, right. So let me just repeat this part again. As soon as I encounter 1 by 3, I would say that if I subtract 1 by 3 from 1, that means I need 2 by 3. So I can just directly count the number of 2 by 3s present in my array and that value will be added to my answer. Right. So this is how I can count the total number of pairs. So I can store this information or the frequency of these elements in a data structure like a map. So it can be like a pair of integers, let's say this is integer and this is also integer. The second part will be frequency. So it should be integers and a frequency map, right. So this is the name and the first part will be a pair which is which will be storing the numerator and the denominator respectively and this will be the actual frequency. So after reducing the fractions, I can store them in this particular map and then according to the frequency, I will add it to my answer. So there is one thing that you need to take care that the way they are asking us to answer this problem is they consider 1 comma 2 and 2 comma 1 these two pairs to be same, right. So we only have to count them once we don't have to count them twice. Right. So this is one thing that you need to take care of. So how do we do this? There is one very popular method of doing this particular operation whenever we want to count only one pair. So we are not going to store all the values in the frequency map initially. We are just going to add them one by one. So for example, let us say our reduced fractions are like these. The first is 1 by 2, then we again have 1 by 2, then we have 1 by 3 and then we have 2 by 3, right. So these are the fractions. Now. When I reach this particular position, I say that I have 1 by 2, I need 1 by 2 more, but I don't have any 1 by 2 with me. So this will contribute 0 to my answer. But now before moving to this particular index, I will increment its frequency, right. So that means I am saying that I have encountered this particular element before. Now when I reach the next element, when I reach this particular element, I say that I currently have 1 by 2. I need 1 by 2 more. So how will I get it? I say that I have already encountered 1 by 2 once. So its frequency is 1, right. So I will add 1 to my answer. Now what I will do? I will update the frequency of 1 by 2 again before moving on to the next index and the frequency of 1 by 2 will now become 2, right. Now for this particular index, I will say that I already have 1 by 3. To make my summation 1, I need 2 by 3. So the frequency of 2 by 3 in the map is currently 0. So this will contribute nothing to my answer, right. Now before moving on to the next index, I will increment this particular value's frequency, right. And then I will say that I currently have 2 by 3. 
to make the sum 1, I need 1 by 3. So what is the frequency of 1 by 3 in my frequency map? It will say that the frequency of 1 by 3 is 1. So 1 will get again added to my answer. So this way my answer will be 2 and this way I can avoid repetitive counting of the same pairs. Right. So what you will do for each index you will find your answer and after finding your answer for that particular index you will add that value to your frequency map. So now one last question how do you reduce these fractions into their simplest form. Right. For this you can make the use of GCD. Right. Because if you have two numbers A and B the divisor that is common in both of them would obviously be GCD. It will be the greatest common divisor. So if I remove the greatest common divisor from A and B respectively, then the new value, let's say x comma y that we get will have nothing in common, right? So what I'll have to do is I'll first have to find the GCD of A comma B, right? And then I'll have to divide A by GCD. Similarly, I'll have to divide B by GCD, right? Now what will be the overall time complexity? It will be O of n for traversing the array and log n for finding the GCD, it is not actually log n. This GCD function is logarithmic in nature, but it actually depends on the initial values of a and b, right? But we are just considering it to be log n just for the sake of simplicity. And also we will be accessing the map elements. So it will be log n as well for accessing the map, right? And the space complexity is obviously O of n because of the map, we are storing all the elements in the map, right? So let us have a look at the code. So you see what I've done is I've created a map. The first part is pair of integers. This is going to store the numerator and denominator respectively. And the second part is integers, which is going to store the frequency. So I initialize my answer value with zero and I'm just traversing through all the indexes from zero to less than n. Now I calculate the GCD as underscore underscore GCD. So this is actually the inbuilt uh, SCL function in C++ underscore underscore GCD. Now, I will pass numerator of i and denominator of i as parameters. Now I divide both numerator and the denominator with GCD and I find two values x and y as the new numerator and denominator. Now since I want to find some other fraction and that fraction will be equals to z by y, right? So what is the value of z? It is equal to y minus x. So I will add the frequency of z comma y into my answer, right? But before adding the frequency, I am just checking whether it is even present in my map or not. So why am I checking before adding this particular value? So let's say if I don't check this particular thing, right? What will happen if let's say z comma y is not present in my map, it will create a new key in the map and then initialize the default value with zero. So the thing is, if z comma y is not present, it is going to create a new key, which is unnecessarily going to take some extra space. So sometimes what happens, this particular thing exceeds the memory limit and the solution might fail. So while using maps, just take care of this particular thing that before accessing the key in the map, you can always make sure that the key you are looking for is actually present in the map or not, right? So only then I'll add this particular value to my answer. Now at the end, I can just increment the frequency of numerator of i and denominator of i passed as a pair. And at the end, I can just return my answer value. So let me just submit this and show you that this particular code works and the solution is absolutely correct. So you see it passes all the test cases and the solution is absolutely correct. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and to be able to reach more number of people like you who to keep solving new problems. So I see a lot of people who these videos have not subscribed yet. In case you're one of them, then definitely consider subscribing. It's always free of cost and you can always unsubscribe if you don't find the videos interesting later. So share this channel with your friends. Until the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe, bye bye.